At this point, we've learned how to name a few different types of compounds, and this is usually where some students get confused. They're not sure when they should be using Roman numerals or not. Um, they're not sure when they should be using Greek prefixes like di or tri. And so what I'd like to do is make a flow chart that's gonna help walk you through the process of, of naming all different types of compounds. Again, this is only gonna work for naming compounds. So this is only gonna work when we are starting with a formula and we are converting that formula into a name. In general, students don't struggle as much going in the other direction. It's usually just going from formula to name and specifically has to do with whether or not Greek prefixes and Roman numerals should be used. So the first thing that I want you to always do when you're looking at the formula is ask yourself how many types of atoms are present? How many types, not how many atoms, but how many types of atoms? And really what I want you to, to break it down as either being two types, so there's gonna be two different types of atoms, or there's gonna be more than two. And we'll start on the left side. If you only have two types of atoms, the next thing that you should be asking yourself is if one is one of them a metal. Is one a metal? And on the periodic table, the metals are going to be on the left-hand side of this jagged line. Remember on the periodic table, we've got this jagged line that runs through over here on this side and everything to the left is a metal and everything to the right is a non-metal. So um, we wanna know based off the periodic table if one of them is a metal. And that's gonna be a, you know, a yes or a no question. So let's say yes, one of them is a metal. Then what you need to do is ask yourself, is the metal the transition metal? Now the transition metals on the periodic table, um, just as a refresher, the transition metals are the ones that are in this area right here. They're in the B columns on the periodic table. And if one of your metals is a transition metal, so again, this is a yes or no question. If you have a transition metal, that means that you are going to use the Roman numerals. Um, and if, you, if you're unsure of how to use Roman numerals, you need to just, just go back a few slides to where I covered that. I'm not gonna talk about how to use the Roman numerals in this video. You do need to use Roman numerals. You do not use prefixes. And also, if you're not sure about what is meant by the prefixes or how to use prefixes, go back a few videos. This is only intended to summarize whether or not you're using these. So no prefixes. Roman numeral, yes, prefix, no. If your metal is not a transition metal, then that would mean that it's in group 1A or group 2A. That means that you have no Roman numerals. We only use those on our transition metals. And also no prefixes. So no di, no tri, no tetra, no mono. And that covers that part of this diagram. So let's go back up here um, where we're at. If we have two types of atoms and we asked ourselves, is one of them a metal? If the answer to that question is no, so that means we have two non-metals. Going back to the periodic table again, jagged line divides metals and non-metals, and this is the area where we find non-metals. So if you have no metals at all, and instead you just have a collection of non-metals, that means you're dealing with a molecular compound, you are going to use your prefixes. So we're gonna use mono, di, tri, no Roman numerals, those are only used on metals. And again, if you're not sure how to use prefixes, you need to go back to that video where I taught you how to use prefixes. So that covers all of this part. If you have um, more than two types of atoms, that as a Gen Chem student, as an introductory student, the chances are pretty much 100% that you're looking at a compound that has a polyatomic ion. So if you have more than two um, atoms, the first thing that you need to do is look for the polyatomic ion. because it's probably there. Um, and you might have two polyatomic ions. It might be both a cation and an anion. 
Now, you once you have found your polyatomic ion, you are going to name your cation. And then you're going to follow that up with the name of the anion. You will use no prefixes, no matter what. You will use Roman numerals only if the cation is a transition metal. And that should, should walk you through naming most, if not all, of the compounds that you come across as a first-year student.